my channel. My name is Nina. I'm a graphic designer. I do freelance graphic design, focus in brand identity. I'm learning brand strategy. I would love for you to come along to learn with me. So stay tuned for more of that sort of content. Today, uh, I would like to go through my workflow for creating logos. So first off, when you're creating a logo, you're gonna get a brief from your client or whomever you may be working for, or maybe yourself. So you're gonna have some info about the logo, some things that the client wants and needs. Um, ideally, if you are doing brand identity for somebody, you should do a strategy session beforehand because that allows you to make informed decisions about your, your creative decisions. <laughs> We're not, we're, I'm not going to go through uh, researching a target audience or anything right now. So what you're going to do first? Uh, I usually compile all the things that were in the brief that I need to remember. The one I used most recently was uh, from Logo Core. It was day six, I think, of the 30 day logo challenge. I've been doing this logo challenge for, oh, I don't know, three months. I'm on day six. I don't know if that tells you anything about me. <laughs> I'm very reliable, okay? Anyway, you're gonna wanna start out with your handy dandy notebook. Um, I use this thing. I'm really bad at thumbnails. I, I'm not a typical artist. I don't draw well on physical mediums. I can copy things, but I cannot come up with things on my own. I'm very bad. At just creating from my brain so usually I will just hop right into Illustrator and start designing and exploring my options there but that's really not a good thing to do try to get your ideas out on paper good practice I don't always follow it do as I say not as I do necessarily so I'm skipping that part today uh, because I've actually already created a logo it is not very delicious one it's not very good. I usually spend a lot more time on a logo, but I didn't like this brief very much. So uh, that's, that's what I went with. That's what we're working with today. So let's just get into my setup and workspace. When you get into Illustrator, you're gonna have this thing that pops up. Well, it won't pop up. You have to click it. You have to click create new, and then this will pop up. As you can see, I do a lot of these eight by eight ones. I don't know. I do 8 by 8 I will explain why in a, in, a, in a little bit. I'm just going to start with one artboard. We're, I'll add more. I usually add more during my logo creation. No bleed because we're not designing to the edges. CMYK color and 300 pixels per inch is what I usually set up my logos as. There's a reason and we will explore that reason in two seconds. So create. All right. So let's see for a sec. We're going to create a shape. Here's the shape. Let's fill it. Okay, so I've actually have set up two documents. One is in CMYK and one is in RGB. So I'm gonna change this color to a red because red I've found is something that is really hard to find a vibrant red in in CMYK. So I'm gonna do that here. So it's just the color I used is we're gonna go all the way to the top and then we're gonna go all the way over here. So that's in CMYK. And then if you come over here and do the same thing. See, CMYK automatically made that color go over here when I specifically told it that I wanted this one. But that's because in print, there is no such color as this one in RGB. RGB has a much more vast palette than CMYK does. And that is because a screen can display a whole lot more colors than a printer can print. So that is why we have the two different color modes. And I don't know if you can see the difference here. We'll just center align this. All right, so you can see, you can clearly see the difference here between the two. One, this one is very vibrant. This one, not very vibrant. That's because this is in CMYK. So the reason I start designing logos in CMYK is because if you design a logo here in RGB and you have a specific color that you wanted for that and you work all your colors around that and then they want to print it because let's be real, all logos are going to be printed at some point. Unless it's 
I don't know. Maybe maybe it won't be, but most likely it's going to be. So when they switch it to CMYK, all of your colors are going to be translated, I guess, into CMYK for print. And you're going to lose a lot of vibrancy. You're going to lose a lot of your color choices. They're just not going to be what you want them to be. So if you start out in CMYK, then you can't get disappointed. <laughs> okay, so this is my workspace that I use in Illustrator. I'll go through the panels real quick. Now, if you go up here to Window, you can see all the ones I have open. And if you wanted to open all the other ones, you can do that just by clicking on here in this Windows drop-down menu. The ones I use the most probably would be layers right here. I go through those a lot. I like to organize my stuff. A lot of designers don't organize their stuff, but I can't work that way. So I have the layers here. Down below that I have stroke and transparency, which I use both of those a lot in regular design. This isn't necessarily my logo design setup. I don't switch workspaces, but this one works for all of the designs that I do. And then below that I have my artboards and I often add artboards as I'm working, so it's convenient to have the button right here where you can just add another. Over here, I have Transform, Align, and Pathfinder, and these three things, aside from the Layers panel, it's what I use the most for everything. So I like to have Transform open so you can resize things incredibly quickly. Right here, I like to be able to just use my arrow keys and resize, you can change the angle, you can do all of those things here, and you don't have to click and drag, sometimes it's easier to just be able to work this way. I don't know, you can do whatever you want, that's what I do. Then we have our line, of course, that aligns things like this, and we've got Pathfinder, very convenient just to have in case you need it. I use those things a lot, I use, you know, mostly just divide and merge, but Anyway, then you have your character. Uh, in working with logos, you're going to be using type a lot. Typography is very important in logo design. So I don't use open type. I don't know why I have it there, but I don't even actually really know what that is. Let's pretend I do because I'm an expert. Whatever. Anyway, color and swatches are really convenient to have open here. Over here, I have gradient and appearance and graphic styles. I don't use those much for logo design because a good principle when designing logos is to make them as simple as possible and using gradients and appearance, all those effects and everything, it's not good practice. But like I said, this isn't just my logo design setup, it is my all over design setup so I keep those open. Uh, my screen's big enough that it can display all of this and I don't feel cramped. If you're display is smaller than mine, I would suggest not doing that. I would just keep open what you need. So I mentioned that I would explain why I use an 8x8 canvas for my logos, and I forgot to do that, so here that is right now. So let's say you have a graphic, and you would like to resize that graphic. Now I like to just go into transform right here and resize this way a lot of the time. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes it's what I do. So. You can use the arrow keys when you're here to either go up or down and scale it that way. You can also hold shift to make the differences a bit bigger. If I was working with a art, an artboard that was bigger than 8x8, eight eight, you would have to click a lot of times in order to get your shape to be the, the size that you want it to be. I think just using an appropriately sized artboard just makes the difference a lot better. Of course, I'm pretty sure you can go into your settings and change the specified amount for each button click, but I just, you know, it's easier to just work with this size canvas. Also, let's change my artboard size. Let's change it to, I don't know, we'll do three inches by three inches because it is vector, so it doesn't really matter how high or, I mean, how big your canvas is. But if you start working in a very small canvas like this, then when you're in the transform panel, it's less, like this graphic is less than an inch right now. So if I to use the arrow keys to make it bigger or smaller, 
then the difference is going to be a lot bigger than you want it to be. So you don't want your canvas to be huge because then your button clicks are going to make it take forever to get to the size you want it to be. And if your canvas is too small, then one click is going to be bigger than you want it to be. So sometimes also I like to type in a value here because like if um, 0.625 is too small but 0.75 is too big, I like to type something in between. So I don't really like having to work with decimals very much because I'm a simple girl, you know? I like to be able to not do that. So when your shape is able to be bigger, you don't have to work with decimals as much. So that is why I do that. Alright, so this is my logo process. Normally I would spend a lot more time on a logo. I would actually make thumbnails most likely, write them out, sketch them in my book, and then I would have a place to start from. This time I, I just wanted to get a recording done so I, I wasn't being super picky about it. Uh, this logo is not super inspired. It's not very good to be honest. But let's just focus on what the purpose is and the purpose is my workflow. So as you can see I'll explore one option and then make a new artboard, explore a different option and my artboards end up kind of evolving over time. This third option that I'm working on currently is probably the best option in terms of potential, but it just took so much tweaking to make it look even passable that I think that I, I just I didn't want to fray with it anymore, so I, I quit and I ended up ultimately going with the second option, which I don't love. I don't love it. It's not my best work. Please don't judge me on it. Like I said, this is for workflow purposes, not for showing you my skills and, and making nice looking things. This is, yeah, it's, it's not my best work. If you go on Google and look up on images slash films or go on Instagram and look up that hashtag, you'll find a lot of similar things. There's a lot of film, film reels, cameras, also a lot, a lot of typography ones with slashes through it or similar effects, which is what I ended up going with online. Normally, I would look up, you know, the in I would look up logos from the industry of the logo that I'm designing for, and I would try to stay away from all of the common ones, but like I said, I didn't like this brief very much, so I just kind of went with it, and as it is, I mean, this sped up version is, I don't know, three minutes, a little longer than three minutes. I only spent a couple hours on this. Usually I would spend a lot more time on it, and I would end up having 15 plus artboards showing my whole process. that's basically it. And after that, I just make sure to export it in any of the file types they may need. It's good to give them, I usually give them an uh, SVG file, the AI file, uh, PNG, and PDF. That's usually what I do and, and give it to them in the lockups that they need and in the color versions that they need. I try to give them an all white version, an all black version, and a full color version just to make sure you set them up for success. Some designers don't like to give out the working file, but 
I'm a strong believer that they paid money for it. You can give them an upcharge to give them the full working file if you want, and that's totally fine. I usually just agree with the client on a price to begin with, and then I'll give them the working file after that. And if they need me for anything else, hopefully they had a good enough experience that they'll come back and hire me to do whatever it was that they needed me to do again. But I like to give my clients the freedom to not have to come back to me, like they say, if you love them, let them go, and if they love you, they'll come back, or, or something. I don't know. I think that loosely applies here. Maybe I'm gonna pretend that it does because I just said it, and now I feel a little awkward about it, but I'm gonna commit, and I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I hope some of this information was helpful. It's, if it wasn't, I'm going to have other more valuable information coming up soon, so stick around. I will be, I will be back. I'll be here. I'll see you. Anyway, actually I won't. You'll see me. Okay, I guess that's all for today. See you in the next video. I love you. Goodbye.